There's danger lurking in the Baltic Sea, says Benedict Hatch. He's a marine researcher from Poland and spends a lot of time out at sea. Everyone thinks there's nothing special there. But down below, it's either all great and rosy or it's a tragedy. Shipwrecks from the Second World War. Bombs, munitions and toxic chemicals pose a risk to the ecological balance of the Baltic Sea, threatening life in it and around it. Benedict Hatch is officially retired. As a former commander with the Polish Navy, he spent much of his life on the water. Now he's researching what to him is home, the Baltic Sea. He may be in his mid-60s, but he's not planning to put his feet up just yet. It appears we're now in the first phase of discovering the secrets of the Baltic Sea. We already know a great deal, but we're still searching for new dangers and we're still discovering them. That's sad. Benedict Hatch and his crew are approaching yet another wreck, a potential hazard to the environment. They scan it using sonar, a kind of underwater radar. We're now sailing over the wreck. Yes, exactly. We're now sailing over the hull of the submarine. It's also visible on the sonar, but because the waves are so strong, the image isn't perfect. It looks as if the wreck has been torn apart, but it's still in one piece. You can see a straight line, a straight hull. All clear. The wreck is known and not dangerous. I reckon there are about 5,000 wrecks in Polish waters. We've only explored about 20% of the ocean floor in Polish territory. Which still leaves 80%, and hundreds, perhaps thousands of shipwrecks lying on the bottom of the sea. Benedict Hatch leads his expeditions together with a research institute. Their purview is the whole of the Baltic Sea. Their home is Gdansk Bay. This is the place where the Second World War was started by Nazi Germany under Adolf Hitler. Numerous ships were sunk in the final years of the war, as well as tons of munitions. Benedict Hatch discovered one of the most toxic wrecks, the Stuttgart. It was once an elegant passenger steamer, then used as a hospital ship for Hitler's Navy. It was sunk by American forces in the fall of 1943. Its steel hull has been at the mercy of the seawater for almost 80 years. Anyone who's ever had a Polonaise, a Polish car, knows what happens when the rust attacks. Even ships and wrecks decay. The construction just breaks apart. The sonar image shows the wreck of the Stuttgart, an expanse of debris on the seabed. But what Hodge found around the ruined ship is even more worrying. The researchers took samples from the sea floor and brought them up to the surface. Something black and sticky is dripping from the excavator shovel. Crude oil from the wreck of the Stuttgart. The oil is heavier than water, which is why it hasn't floated to the surface. Instead, it's been seeping into the seabed for decades. Hotch and his crew first collect samples near the ship, then slowly fan out. They gather a total of 1,000 samples. We're on the brink of an ecological disaster. More than 400,000 square meters of the seafloor have been contaminated with oil. That's equivalent to at least 40 soccer pitches.
These jars used to contain jam or pickles. Now Benedict Hutch uses them to store his samples. Parts of the Baltic seafloor contaminated with crude oil, catalogued with the exact location and date of discovery. These are samples from November 2021, a black sticky mass. These fuels may be heavier than water, but they also contain substances that are lighter than water, which float upwards. This produces a huge slick. There must be around a thousand tons of fuel, so about a million kilograms. The 80-year-old fuel is visible as an oil slick on the surface of the water. It's only a matter of time before it washes up on beaches. This is a place where I've spent many years of my life. I often walk along the beach with my wife too. Our granddaughter also loves coming here with us. It would be an irreparable loss if we couldn't do that anymore. Some people say that fish from this area doesn't need to be fried in oil because it already contains oil. That's a dark joke. I eat fish caught beyond the Baltic Sea, mostly cod and pollock from the North Sea. I know too much and don't want to risk anything. Hutch and his team aren't able to clean up the toxic legacies of the war. In fact, it's not clear who is responsible for the job, which would cost millions. Most of the shipwrecks in Polish waters are German vessels. What the Polish researchers can do is learn as much as possible about the wrecks, the oil and other marine finds like munitions, torpedoes and mines. They try to scan the ocean bed with the most up-to-date equipment including this highly sensitive acoustic radar device. We're able to transform sound into images. I often joke that we're like marine bats. We see with sound. We construct an image based on reflected sound waves. Brilliant. The technology is exciting, but the information it brings to light has crew members increasingly worried. One of the most alarming wrecks is the Franken. This German tanker supplied the country's navy with fuel in the Baltic Sea. In April 1945, the ship was torpedoed by the Soviet Navy and sank here, with 3,000 tons of fuel on board. The Franken is a large wreck lying at a depth of 70 meters. The situation is very dangerous, and it's getting worse every day. The hull is propped up on the midsection. The two sides are hanging free. The hull is under enormous pressure. At some point, it will just break. That's what happens with steel wrecks. The problem is, the fuel tanks are right at the point where it will break. Divers confirm Hatch's suspicion that the ship has been heavily attacked by rust. It's difficult to predict how long the tanks will hold out. All Hatch can do is keep sounding the alarm. Other nearby nations, such as Finland, Sweden and Germany, have recovered wrecks from their Baltic seawaters. Poland hasn't yet done so. Benedict Hatch says that so far, there's been a lack of know-how and people willing to take initiative. Slavomir Lipinski is also well aware of the dangers lurking in the Baltic Sea. He's known Benedict Hatch for 30 years. The two men met in the Polish Navy and have been friends ever since. 
but not everyone is so enthusiastic about Hatch's research. There's a saying in Poland, what the eye does not see, the heart does not grieve over. Not many people seem to care about the shipwrecks out at sea. But Hatch never tires of trying to spread awareness. He urges authorities and politicians to take an interest in the issue, says Slavomir Lipinski. He has a highly developed curiosity. What's around this corner? What hasn't been discovered yet? What can be done? What can we do better? There's a dynamism about him that captivates other people. Still, most people aren't excited about pollution and the prospect of costly disposal. What they are interested in is lost treasure. Rumors about the Karlsruhe, a German cruiser, triggered something akin to gold rush fever when it was claimed that the wreck might contain the famous Amber Room. The priceless treasure, looted from St. Petersburg by the Nazis in 1941, disappeared after World War II. Although the ship was found, the treasure was not. It's a big mystery that we're probably not going to unravel anytime soon. But we'll keep trying. We know from the first expedition that something's there, but we don't know what yet. When most people look out into the ocean, all they see is water. Benedict Hatch has made it his life's mission to look at what's beneath the surface and prompt others to do the same. And not only when it comes to the Baltic Sea. This is just the start. The oceans are vast and our knowledge of what's happening and how it's happening is very limited. Are we sailing into port? 